Last time on Chronotopia, Devmo plummeted to his death. Trapped in purgatory, he meets a witch named Liss. She's going to help him regain his memories by telling him a fairy tale. It's a story about a king who tragically lost his wife. Left with only a donkey that poops gold to console him, the kingdom struggles to find their liege a new love. <laughs> To get a better understanding of the king's psyche, they called an old druid. Go and try to convince the king to find a new wife. We are ready to do anything to make him change his mind, regardless of whom would be the wife he chooses. Do not worry, sirs, and sit by. Oh, fuck. The druid, <laughs> dishonest but quite crafty and handsome, was fearless when it came to influencing the human soul. As soon as he appeared before the gloomy king, he made a great impression by the mysterious look he had perfected. Did he use that voice, though? Your Highness, your counselors invite me here today because they worry about your health. Speak freely, your majesty. What is weighing on your heart? I see they heard man they fully didn't they didn't fully understand i feel like i made a terrible mistake <laughs> come come your majesty you can talk to me i have a staff the death of my wife of course you should have known that i have lost any desire to live since she died in my arms and i cannot see nor hear i keep <laughs> okay i keep on brooding over the past again and again i understand the queen's ghost still haunts you and you are a prisoner to the past yet could this spell be broken? You wish for the good of the kingdom, yes? Of course! Well, that in my own self-interest, I want to follow through with her work. I want it to be strong with her good works. I uh, let myself be shed away by time and decay. It is far too late now. If I may, your majesty, I think there is one solution. You have to find a young woman able to become the new queen. That I, no one ever said that before. No one can do it. I have taken a look at the portraits of all the neighboring girls from good families who were ready to ready to be wed. They have been sent to me, all of them. Not a single woman of with her qualities. Yet you do not wish to meet any of them. You're just going to stare at these portraits that they sent and assume that you know everything about them. How shall the war? I'm sorry. <laughs> Why not give them a chance to uh, show you who they are? I mean, Sorry, what? What? It, but these portraits are lovely. I don't see... It does not matter. I already know it. Could it be you are taking the queen's last wish to heart and you are only ready to wed a far more beautiful than she was? That's not quite what I asked for. Beauty is indeed enjoyable. I'll just leave it at that. Beauty is indeed enjoyable. Uh, but I really do not care about it. I only ask, I only ask her to be wise, smart, and righteous, and beautiful. I see. Are you looking for someone who shares your dead wife's traits? Dot, dot, dot. The king stood still. Given the awkward silence, the druid assumed he was right. The king did not want just any princess. He wanted someone who seemed like his departed wife as much as possible. And if there were a Moorish princess, would you consider marrying her? You racist bastard. <laughs> <laughs> It's decided then. Resurrect my wife. <laughs> In that case, your highness, I know only of one such person. One righteous and wise princess who looks exactly like your departed queen. She lives near you at the moment. Uh, I really hope you're not suggesting what I think you're suggesting. And who might she be? I have a portrait of her on me. I think it's the only Wait, one you did not glance at. You have this on you? Well, yes, I carry them around. I actually have quite a few, if you know what I mean. Re really? Yes, well, the druid's life is very lonely, your majesty. Why would my counselors hide this mysterious princess from me? We'll see for yourself, your majesty. Uh, page 32. The right. ambitious druid handed the portrait to the aging king. He grabbed it and paced up and down across the room in a revealing silence. She, she is magnificent. The skin... The face, this expression, she is lovely. Who and, and who are you telling me that she is wise and righteous? Absolutely, your highness. She has received only the best education. I recognize those eyes. I could swear I'm looking at my wife. How is this possible? Who is this foreign girl? Why, she is the princess, Kiona. Your daughter, your majesty. Oh, <laughs> my daughter! Oh, my. Twist! <laughs> <laughs> 
For a split second, the king was shocked. Depression had taken hold of him to the point of cutting him off from reality. To be honest, he had refused to see his daughter since the queen's funeral, because her mere presence reminded him of those beautiful days forever lost. He did not even know what she looked like or what kind of woman she'd become. All of a sudden, he felt shameful. I need to be alone. Uh, you're... Are you making me a fool of me, Druid? Are you telling me to marry my own daughter? Oh, no, 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 no. Or maybe yes. Well, admittedly, it must sound rather extreme, but think about it, your highness. Is there someone else who could look more like your departed wife than her? Oh, is it not troubling? I would even say she's a gift from God. A divine gift, you say? Yes, Princess Kyoto <laughs> looks too much like her departed mother for it to be coincidence this must be god's plan uh, the queen's soul <laughs> did not go to heaven it settled in that young tailor-made <laughs> body <laughs> she is this simply is not waiting for. for you to find her my lord do not miss the second <laughs> chance <laughs> so what i want to know is what fairy tale is this <laughs> hmm. Confused by the old druid's silver-tongued words, <laughs> the king hesitated and eventually sent the man away, claiming he would think about the creepy man's suggestion. <laughs> but the seed had already been planted. Weakened by his unstable state, the king was already struggling to not completely succumb to despair. The flickering hope the swindling druid had brought him was enough to make the king fall into darkness. Little by little, over the course of the more and more frequent visits... From the, the, the man who would become his confidant, the king started to give in to the idea. The druid had a way of implying that the young princess was actually the reincarnation of her mother, and that she surpassed her in everything, so much that the impressionable king eventually believed him. This new obsession was the only thing which was keeping him alive from this point forward, and thus it was not long before he did the unforgivable. Uh. That morning, a sweet scent hung in the castle <laughs> corridors. The azure sky hinted at a beautiful spring day ahead. In the feeble light illuminating a four-poster bed, a silhouette was quietly moaning. All of a sudden, hurried footsteps could be heard nearby, and the door was slammed open! A breathless young retainer entered the suite and said, Princess, it's time to wake up! A muffled groan was the only answer. I would love to let you sleep, but I cannot do so, unfortunately. Do not forget that your private tutor has scheduled a lesson for this morning. The figure moved laboriously. Is that you, Nahima? Who else, Princess? I'm the one waking you up every morning. Now please make haste with getting out of bed. We need to perform your... Uh, toilet? <laughs> Washing her face, you dirty people. <laughs> Without a word... The young girl stood up and let her maid guide her. Though, hmm. <laughs> I Go ahead. I, through You're doing great. precise and vigorous <laughs> gestures, the retainer made her take a bath and then took care of dressing her. Thank you. I don't think I can. <laughs> no, you're welcome, that Frog. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> but just as the retainer was going to brush her hair, Kiona seemed to finally get out of her torpor. What is that flowery scent that's been tickling my nose since this morning? It must be the verbenas, princess. It is the season, after all. Verbenas are quite explicit, f exquisite flowers, do you not think? All those colors. Maybe. Well, I see you're not fully awake le yet. Your lesson is going to start soon, you know. Do not worry about me, Nahima. I'm quite positive the poor sod will be late again anyway. Princess, you should not speak ill of your tutor. He is an excellent teacher. What has he planned for today? I do not know. We've completely given up on arithmetic over the past couple of days, and we are now focusing on practicing singing and playing the harp. The only surprise is that he tried to do arithmetic with a girl in the first place, I'm sure. You're only studying music? Why this sudden change? It is a request from my father, or so it seems. I do not know why. I've not seen him for years. I thought he had no more interest in me. <laughs> I, I have an interest in you now. <laughs> I'm sure the king is simply a bit shy. Uh, oh, though he can get on his high horse, he may not even dare to be near you after your mother's death. I think he resents me. And why would that be? 
One way or another, he must be ashamed of me. He surely had some mistress all the while, and soon he will tell me that he wants to repudiate me. That would not be correct of him. In that case, why has he not tried to marry me off? I am 17 years <laughs> old. Is it not unusual? I do like the freedom, but I cannot shake the feeling that it is a bad omen. How right you are. After all, young girls from good families are wed between 12 and 14 years old. I am getting old, and at this rate, nobody will ever want to marry me. With a lovely face like yours, perish the thought. You're as beautiful as an angel, princess. And as smart as that, no prince should ever refuse your hand. Especially with your arithmetic. <laughs> <laughs> ah, arithmetic's overrated. Thank you, Nahima. It is nice of you to comfort me. You know I mean it. I kind of have a little bit of a crush on you. Look at that beautiful hair. I could just brush it for hours without getting bored. Kuna gave a faint and slightly creepy smile. <laughs> <laughs> Nahima had been her retainer, her personal assistant and confidant for many, many, many years. As far as she could remember, they had been inseparable. Older by only two years, Nahima happened to share the heiress's Maritanian origins. However, unlike Kiona's family, which had always consisted of famous nobles, Nahina's humbler family had settled in the region as a family of retainers. The late queen herself had trusted the young Maritanian servant, and that was how she became the princess's escort despite her humble origins. She was now greatly enjoying taking care of the princess, and the sudden death of the queen had only brought them closer. It was, without a doubt, Nahima's optimism and kindness, which were allowing Kiona to live a comfortable life despite the grim state of the country. Between the lessons intended to hone her knowledge of everything except her arithmetic, and the time spent <laughs> with her retainer, the Harris was not lacking in anything. Yet, she was feeling deeply bored, and, to her dismay, no party could ever awaken the sleeping castle. If things keep going like this, I'm going to die of old age within these walls, she thought. <laughs> a bit melancholic. <laughs> no one will ever look for me. No one will ever come to save me, and I will end up alone in this depressing place. She did not want to show Nahima her anguish, so she tried her best to smile. With the bathing done, the two girls left the room to attend to their occupations. Once the servant was out of sight, the princess... <sighs> <laughs> Even though Nahima was her confidant, and she trusted her, there was one thing Kiona had never told her. Something was troubling her. She sometimes felt like she was being watched, especially on a day like this one. Pest binoculars? As the weather was sunny, her tutor enjoined her to go to the palace's inner garden and to begin her recital. And, as she had foreseen, the princess felt someone insistently looking at her as she was singing. A gaze that was coming from the king's cabinet. Hmm. Dun Who dun could dun. It be? <laughs> That's creepy. As usual, the king was observing his daughter from afar, staring at her with a desire that was not hidden anymore. Ooh. The old druid had grinded him down, and now the king was as desperate as he was convinced. He had to marry her. That day, his counselors had gathered at his request. He was going to inform them of his decision. Wait, whoa. <laughs> whoa. This should be good. Uh, the mood <laughs> was heavy. Everyone felt something major was about to happen, and they were as worried as they were eager to hear what the king had to say. Thank you all for coming. This is wonderful <laughs> news. <laughs> as you all know, many of you have been begging me to remarry. Until now, I was quite against it. And as we, I wanted to keep the promise that I had made to my late wife. However, I have finally found someone worthy of replacing her and sitting beside me on the throne. The magic donkey. <laughs> um, the counselor <laughs> seemed both old. incredulous and a bit ecstatic. Though the magic donkey had long been a... No, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for making your that decision, your highness. You may have thought of us as insensitive, but we were only doing... Uh, if for your sake and the kingdoms. Absolutely, and we're sure the woman you have chosen will be up to the task. Could you tell us who the young lady... Uh, can you tell us who the young lady who managed to entice you might be? Of course! I will not hide the truth for much longer. 
She who. <laughs> <laughs> he just comes right out and wow. says it. Bold. Yeah. <laughs> Subtlety, <laughs> Subtlety is overrated when you're courting your daughter. <laughs> she who my heart has chosen is Princess Kiona. And I hereby officially announce my decision to marry her. Oh. In a shared moment of fear, all the counselors said, Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Some thought they must have been heard. Others thought it probably was a misunderstanding. The king had had a stroke. He was saying words that he didn't mean. One brave soul decided to break the ice and shyly asked, Shy? Princess Kiona? Your daughter? I'm turning all the old people to hot dogs and you're next! <laughs> the flying hell is going on. Well, that sounds like a great plan. The world needs hot dogs. Oh, son, stop him! Why are you so 